Hello, I'm John with Roadkill Incorporated, and this will be a fairly unusual video for me. I wanted to document my attempt to put a Mac Mini into an Apple II floppy drive. Um, I found some pictures on the internet uh, showing that it could be done, um, but there wasn't much detail, so I wanted to give it a shot. I didn't end up completing the procedure because I found there would be some, you know, permanent disfigurement of the devices uh, required and you know I just didn't want to do that I didn't want to uh, risk not being able to go back um, but I did discover enough interesting information uh, going through uh, the test of doing this to warrant a video I think so anyway I'll take you through taking apart both devices uh, the Mac Mini first uh, these are pretty famous for requiring uh, obviously it's already open, requiring a spackle knife to open them up. Um, basically what you do is when it's closed you stick this in here between the base and the top and just kind of just kind of move it open a little bit and pop it just like a half inch open on this side then that side then more on this side until eventually you're able to just pull it off. You don't want to put too much pressure on one side it might break but uh, it's not too difficult to do. Uh, and this comes off like that. Literally, uh, there, there are no screws holding this on. It's, it's just uh, the snugness that holds it on there, the, possibly some suction, I'm not sure. So anyway, and again, obviously, this has already been taken apart. You then have the antenna, which is locked in here. You press these little plastic pieces in, and the antenna pops open. Then there's a little connector here on the front, that you have to pull out of the base. There's a ribbon cable back here you have to disconnect from the back of the uh, optical drive assembly. Then there are four screws, one, two, three, four, and then this comes off. This is the hard drive, there's the hard drive, there's the fan, there's the optical drive, and the connector to the logic board on the back. So there's that. Um, the logic board uh, was only connected to the base uh, in this corner. There's a little uh, metal piece that is screwed in there. You have to take like a, a little wrench or something and, and pull that out. A um, little bit tricky. But once that's out, then you can remove the board. Um, at this point, the board is loose, but there are just two things connected. There's the power button, uh, which is just has this little piece inside here. And then there's a little daughter card connecting the audio ports to uh, the, the board. So this is part of why I didn't complete the whole project. I didn't feel comfortable, you know, tearing these out, um, you know, because they are, I don't know if they're sealed in there, but I, you know, it, it looked a little bit, a uh, little bit tricky. But uh, it's, it's not too hard to see how you can take these out and then, you know, mount them somewhere behind. Um, you have to, you know, figure out a place to put them, but, uh, you know, someone who's resourceful could figure that out. So anyway, there's the Mini dissected, and now on to the Apple II floppy drive. Uh, first thing you notice about this is just the, the obvious quality difference between uh, older computing devices and, and, and newer ones. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just very, very, very solid. So, uh, to take it apart, pretty much they're just four screws, one, two, three, four, and this guy just slides right off. And there you have it. If only computers were that simple these days. Um, so there's that. And then you have the unit here. Um, again, striking how solid these things are. This is almost like, I think it is cast iron. I mean, it's just, you know, a good two pound chunk of something. Um, so the next step is to remove this from the base. There's a screw there, there, and then two at the bottom. And then you've basically got this guy removed from the sliding tray. You do have to uh, disconnect the cable, which is very easy. You've got these 
you just pull these apart and the cable comes right out. And then uh, you have the next obvious step would be to take the front off because you, we'd want to mount the front here. Um, th th there is this thing which screws into a little plastic piece on the front lever. You can kind of see the holes, how they match up. Um, I should note, this provides some, uh, this holds the, uh, the front lever, it provides, it pushes it upward. So if you have the front lever disconnected from that, it's kind of floppy like that. Uh, it doesn't have anything holding it up. So uh, I assume if you're doing this project, you would need to take the front of this, put it on here, put, you know, th this, this lever will stay like that, but you do need to, you would need to figure something out in order to keep it open permanently or to, you know, make it movable. Um, because uh, the thing is, in once the mini is in the machine, all of this is not going to be inside the mini. So you're not going to have this to provide this upward pull. Um, obviously, the mini wouldn't fit in there with all of this in the, in the case. We're basically just moving the mini into the case and taking the floppy drive out. So anyway, uh, there are four screws, one, two, three, four, and then this is loose. The front is loose. It would pop in right here. Um, so that would be easy. I can't remove it right now because the, uh, the, the light, the red light, the power light, uh, activity light is connected by a cable, just simple two cables. Um, so it's obvious to see how that would line up with, you know, the light on the mini right here, you could, you know, connect those. I mean, the connector is not going to connect, but you could solder or whatever you need to do to get the front light connected. And then, you know, you would, I guess there are a couple ways you could do this. You could put the mini on the tray and then slide the mini in, or you could just put the mini on the base here. Uh, whichever would be um, preferable. It might make sense to do that though because then you have the back open and you could press the power button or access the ports. If you put the mini on the tray it would be a little tricky because you know we've got this solid steel uh, backing here so it would be a challenge to figure out how to you know connect cables and that sort of thing. You could maybe cut that in half or whatever. Um, so that's pretty much it. I mean, uh, it's a very doable project, I think, for, you know, the right person. Um, I just want to show you how you could... This is not a good test, obviously, because the logic board would sit underneath this. But uh, just to give you an idea, roughly, you could... It, I'm trying to just show you whether or not they would be level because obviously one of the problems would be to get the optical drive to line up with the floppy. And uh, if you consider the... You're basically going to have this sitting on top of the logic board. So that would approximately, I would say, line up with the level of the floppy. So I would say you're in pretty good shape as far as getting the two to line up at the right level so that the... Um, so that the, you know, a DVD would pop out of there. Uh, you know, obviously you might have to put some uh, little rubber pieces under the corners or something in order to make that more level, but it seems, seems very doable. So again, I think the challenges are getting this guy to stay open or, you know, be where you want it without the, the pressure of this thing inside. Um, then you have connecting the front uh, power light, activity light, if that is something you want to do. Uh, doesn't look like it would be too hard. And then you have the idea or the problem of whether or not to use this big tray or just mount it onto these guys. And then you have the issue of the ports on the back and where to put those, whether to put in your own surface uh, to hold them upright or you know, how we, however you want to do that. Anyway, video is about to end. We're at the 10 minute mark. Thanks a lot for watching.